Hello and good afternoon and welcome to Unlocking the Power of You. I am Timothy White Sr., your host today. And I want to start off by apologizing because I know you guys are looking at this podcast and you've never seen me looking Hollywoodish. <laughs> today I'm looking Hollywoodish and wearing some dark glasses. There's a reason for that. I have a dis- detached retina and it's, it doesn't look all that good. So I didn't want to scare our guest away today. So I'm going to wear these glasses. And with that, I want to make a few announcements real quick. One of which is, let me reach in my pocket because I know this is something we need to talk about. And that is those out there who don't believe in wearing a mask. If you're not wearing a mask and you haven't had your shots, you need to wear the mask. Not for your benefit, but maybe the benefit of someone else. So please, if you haven't worn a mask, if you haven't got this, this vaccination, please get the vaccination and wear the mask. Next announcement, we have Trial Brothers Tailoring. This brother is out there and he's carrying some of my books in his shop. Trial Brothers Tailoring is at 5266 Warrensville Road near Libby Road. Great brother, great tailor. If you dresses, suits, go there, check him out. He's a a good brother in, in the Lord, too. So please check him out. Also, there's John Derrick Hair Studio. Speaking of John Derrick, he just popped into place. But if you have not been to 12200 Fair Hero Road, check out John Derrick's hair salon. Good brother in the Lord, knows what he's doing, been cutting hair for a while. And we met uh, a young man at the Delta Foundation Sunday. And the young man, he's a a cook, a chef. He's getting ready to open up a restaurant. He's going to be opening up his restaurant at 3365 Richmond Road. And it's called No Fork. And he was such a good brother. I said, I want to make an announcement concerning you on the podcast today so you'll know that we were thinking about you and you are in our thoughts and our prayers as well. So also, also, you can follow us. You can find us on you can find us on Facebook. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Amazon TV, Apple TV, Roku TV. So we're all over the country. So if you want to find us and, and see what we're all about, feel free to tune in to us. Now, with that being said, in our studio today, we have three young ladies, business ladies. And they're going to be sharing with us some of their the stories of their life, how they come to be these, these beautiful business women what they're doing, why they're doing, how long they've been doing it, et cetera, et cetera. So with that, I'm going to allow them to introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about yourselves, and then we will jump right into killing these nerves off. (laughs) All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Shayla Ivezi. I am the CEO of Lanscursions, LLC. We are a mobile event and touring company. We provide transportation services for weddings, group excursions, special events, um, even tailgating. And stay tuned to hear more about Lanscursions. Congrats. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, my name is Aaliyah Langford, master stylist for 12 years, Silky Strands. I also teach. Um, definitely my passion is teaching more. I love everything about hair, but teaching is my main thing. Um, single mom, doing it, doing everything, just trying to expand and build, build wealth for my children. Mm. Hello, good afternoon. My name is Joanna Hopper. I am the owner of Blessed to Teach Enrichment Center, and it's actually an enrichment center. And when you hear the word rich, you think wealth, right? So that's what I do. I provide a wealth of knowledge for children, Mm -hmm. two and a half to 12 years of age. I also do transportation um, from school. If parents don't have transportation, we do offer to and from home transportation. And we do homework help and tutoring at our enrichment center. Now, as much as you'd like to be last, now we're going to make you first because you see enrichment. (laughs) Enrichment Center, uh, what is it that you uh, you do? You did say you have a daycare, correct? Yes. Okay, tell us a little bit about the daycare, how long it's been in existence and what you uh, do for the people in the community. Okay, so I've been teaching for 17 years right out of high school. Um, so I've taught in different counties, Lake County, Cuyahoga County. Um, my, the past seven years I've taught in a school district public school and charter school. And so I see the need for academic enrichment. 
one-on-one tutoring. So I decided to go back into the daycare field and open up my own child care facility where I can lay that solid academic foundation. Um, Blessed to Teach in Richmond Center officially was opened back in 2017 out in Lake County. Um, I closed that down, went back into a school district, and I just reopened and was licensed July 27th of 2021. Um, At my enrichment center, we offer personalized care, meaning each child is different. Each child needs specific things, whether it's academic, behavior, counseling, mentoring. So I create plans based on what that child needs, along with the parent's permission and we move forward from there to um, enrich and help the children. So with what you're saying, did you saw a need then in the community for this, or was it just something in your heart? You said, I, you know, I want to do something different. Um, so I've always wanted to be a teacher. I actually had a teacher in third grade named Miss Chambers at East Clark Elementary off of St. Clair. And I just thought this lady, the teacher, was the prettiest lady. She dressed so nice, but she really taught she really was a teacher and I always say when I grow up I want to be like Miss Chambers and that's what I did and so me by I actually am a a new homeowner I just purchased a house in the same area as the center um 90 days ago so I said I'm a homeowner I pay my taxes my kids attend the schools in the community but yet we're lacking our kids are suffering before the pandemic Before the pandemic, academically, they were suffering. And so for me to work in Lake County for about seven years, the resources, the support, the community support, the parent support, I was like, wow, I'm blown away. Why can't we have this over Mm. here in Cuyahoga? What's the difference? You know, you drive Euclid and you probably go through seven to ten cities just going up Euclid, but yet the education system is different but the funding is the same. And so for me, I was like, I worked at a Montessori school out in Lake County, phenomenal. And they didn't sell county vouchers. It was all private and they had over 120 kids enrolled faithfully. So it's like, why can't we have it in the inner city? So I'm the person that's trying to bridge that gap and still provide those services from my experience. And this is where blessed to teach came from. I, I like the the term too. You call it blessed to teach. The number two, absolutely. Okay, blessed to teach. Yes. And and that's it means that it's not a solo effort. Blessed to teach. Yes. And I appreciate what you said that you can see in the outline in communities what was going on. They had all the workings, and. Why do you think it was missing in the city? If you said that exactly the same opportunities were there, what was lacking then? What was missing from your perspective that you brought to Cleveland then? Because you were out there, you said, faithfully working and seeing. So why, why the new dynamic? Okay. So the number two, God said, when two or more joined together. Mm-hmm. So that's where the number two came from. Um, the scripture behind it is Proverbs 22 and 6. That's behind the, the enrichment center. Train up a child in a way that he should go. When he grow old, he will not depart. I'm passionate about that. Um, my uniforms are attire for the daycare has that scripture on it. Um, but what I can say is, for one, teachers are paid, educators, staff members are paid way more out in other counties than Cuyahoga. Um, and so money drives people, even people that are passionate, money drives you to do a little bit more to go above and beyond. Mm -hmm. And so in Lake County, their parents, the salaries are phenomenal. So why not go a bit more or do a little bit more on top of this is what I love to do. The families in that community pay their taxes and most likely they're probably middle class rich class, so they want their money to go where it's supposed to go to benefit their children. And so I just think in the inner city, families really don't pay attention or or, or is knowledgeable about how their tax money affects their children and how they have a lot of say-so about their child's education because of their tax money. But when you deal with, you know, government funding and different things like that, People tend to, that's all, we're all paying taxes somehow, some way, rather, nothing is free. Mm-hmm. No money is free. Mm-hmm. Stimulus checks, it may seem free, but we're paying back 
some part of that at some point, you know. And so I just think that uh, when people in the inner city understand how important it is for their child to be educated, you can have a gift. You could be a football player, soccer player, a rapper, whatever it may be. But if something happens to end that, you need your education to fall back on. That is the foundation. Once the foundation is laid solid, you can build anything on it, but that foundation gonna stay there. I see. I love the fact that you use proverbs. You know, yeah, you train up a child in the way they will go. That when he's old, he will not depart from it. So you are you you're putting into their thinking the need, and not only for the children, but because. The children are only going to imitate, be imitators of what they see the adults doing. Absolutely. And what you said a, a few moments ago, your, your best example was you say the third grade teacher. Yes. You saw somebody and said, you know what, I want to be like that. And that's what we really need to take hold to that. What type of examples are we? Absolutely. What are we bringing into the communities? And uh, Aliyah, I want to ask you too, and give, giving Ms. Hopper a rest for a moment. <laughs> I want to ask you, because you may mention you, you do hair, but you simply says your teaching is more important than that. So okay. why is the teaching superseding the hair? Because most people are driven by, you know, I want to make some money. It's all about the money. I got to get the money. And we know we need it. We know we need money to function and to get through this life, but you put a priority over it. Okay, we can, I can do the hair and do this, the money thing, but at the same time, my passion is my teaching. Why is that? Because... Even with the money, money drives you. When you teach someone how to take care of their hair, they'll keep coming to you. If you teaching them how to take care of their hair, their body, you know, when you go to hair school, it's not just hair. It's hair, skin, nails. When you teach someone how to keep their bodies intact, it comes out in their hair. It comes out in your skin. Your attitude, anything that goes on, it comes out. So if I'm teaching you not just about hair, okay, so I can help you be calm. When you come into the salon, that's a, a place of rest. It's supposed to be a place of rest. You know, calm, good conversation, nice music, you know, your body's relaxed. So now I can come to you and tell you, okay, well, maybe you should do this, that you'll get a better outcome. Use these products, you know. Eat more green vegetables. Drink more water. You know, pray. <laughs> Prayer is major, number one in mm -hmm. everything. So when you do those things and you, you're talking to people, they want to come back because you're educating them. So you, and they don't even notice that you're really teaching them. <laughs> they you, just you're like doing the something. Atmosphere. You're doing something strange because what you're simply saying <laughs> is you're not just coming to get your hair done. You come to get your heart fixed, too. Yes. You, you're teaching them about their bodies and uh, how it, it, I'm looking at your hair. It takes patience to be able to spend time <laughs> braiding these little braids, <laughs> micro braids and so forth. So that that's a, a lesson in itself, because that's a calming effect that you have to have. And right. I don't know too many women who if they're going to have braiding and just yank it out and say, you know, what, forget all this or just cut it off. So there's a patience that goes with that. And right. you're bringing up something that is unusual to really be talking about as far as. I'm not only doing your hair, but I want you to look at your skin. I want you to see what is going on with your skin. I want you to look at the whole person. Correct. So with that as the teaching impetus then, I see what you're saying, but how many of the young people, and I'm, I'm going to assume young people primarily right now, really get that message? Not a lot. Not a lot at all. Um, that's why I went wanted to go back into teaching as far as, like, <clears throat> I actually want to open up a salon for young people getting out of hair school, not just on a, um, you know, school basis, but life base. I've been in a salon for, for a lot of years, and I've seen the good, the bad, the, the older, the younger. I've seen how that go, and I want to, to show them this is the proper way to do it. This is how you keep clients. This is how, you know, clients appreciate you. They bring more clients to you. You know, it's not just about doing hair. It's just not about making you look good. You got to feel good, too. Mm -hmm. So that's what 
my thing is. Well, and that's good because, uh, you know, I, your cousin's over my shoulder, uh, you know. <laughs> Nobody to know who he is, but I'm saying your cousin's <laughs> over my shoulder. And the same thing with the barbershops or wherever you might go. That's the place most people congregate. And you hear most of the stories and life oh, yeah. stories coming through the salons and the, uh, the barbershops. So right. with what you're doing, and you kind of answered it. I want you to elaborate a little bit more on that. Because young people, you say they're not really getting it. We have to... Look at why aren't they getting it? What are what are they missing, or is it something that we're missing in the teaching aspect of it? I think it's both. I think it's something missing in the teaching aspect, especially when it comes to school. You know, a lot of schools didn't really teach that part, and then I think a lot of it has to do with just I just want to make money. I don't care who I hurt. I don't care who I mess up. I don't care about none of that. I just want to make the money, so they don't. You know, they don't know how to treat their customers or their clients. They don't know how to treat the people who are around them that's working with them. They just want to make the money. So I think that's where we come in, especially older stylists, to teach them that. Like, it's not just about making money because you you can make the money anyway. But you want to build these relationships. You want to build because this person may be able to help you do this. This person may know somebody that can help you do that. But when you have the attitude of, I don't care, I just want to make the money, that's not going to work. Well, Ms. Shea, let me ask you then. Because you, you, we have that, we see a lot of that I don't care mentality. Mm-hmm. And it, does it resonate more with the younger people opposing older people? Is it something that they're looking at and somebody say, you know what, I don't like the way Ms. Hopper handles things. She doesn't do things. She's not thinking like, I'm, it's all about the money. I don't care about these kids in here. I just want the money. Um, so for me, I, mean, I just got to go back and give context because go what, right what God is doing here is amazing. So I'm also a teacher. Like my main profession is a third grade teacher. And so just to see that he's brought us here as business owners, as educators, and that stigma that teachers can't go beyond the classroom. Right. One, in and of itself, God is doing something miraculous in this atmosphere Amen. right now. Absolutely. But um, my personal story, so how I got to become a business owner, mm-hmm. um, Everybody goes into business for profit. I didn't. I went into it for purpose. My, mm. I know that my purpose is like to that. teach. Absolutely. And That's we know right. that teachers are underpaid. And I would have personal conversations with God. Like, God, I know that this is my spiritual gift. I know I'm where I'm supposed to be. But it's hard because I'm a single mother. Because I'm a homeowner. And I have all these moving parts that I'm obligated to steward. And my income was not translate into my responsibility and God promised us that where there's vision he'll give provision and so my business grew out of provision that God was giving me to stay in my purpose to teach Hmm. that is that is me at the core Mm -hmm. (laughs) a teacher and in order to stay there he's uh that's how my business came about so I think to answer your question more succinctly um it depends on the person Um, it depends on their foundation most people go into business solely for the profit um and i think that when you put your faith in services and products we see just what the pandemic just did Uh, for me my faith is in god so if my business was to go out of business tomorrow i'm trusting him to replace it with something better so it's just that's my foundation (laughs) and you know this is what i want you to do please you don't have to sit silent you know this is a a christian-based broadcast as well so if you want to say amen and say yeah i like that you know, I you know, say amen. Well, well i'm just right, saying like, the bible the bible teaches us let the redeemed of the lord say so amen. so it's nothing wrong with That's you right. saying something and you know these these guys will say it back there too but <laughs> you, you you feel free to say that and that's one of the the things that we have to look at is if we're looking towards god for our enablement mm. He's going to give you everything you need in order to do what you need to do. Correct? Right. Absolutely. And so far, every one of you have said the same thing. You've echoed the same thing as teachers, as teachers, <laughs> as mentors. You're saying the same thing. So it's, it's a matter of how do we get that to translate be, not only to the younger people, because sometimes the, the biggest obstacles we're going to face is older people. Mm-hmm. We don't like to say that at times, do we? Like they, right. they can be the great obstacle. Why? Because many times, as we get older, we feel we already know things. Mm-hmm. That's right. You can't teach me a new way to braid hair because this is the way we've always braided hair. <laughs> you can't tell me how to raise a child. You just a baby yourself. Right. So you're gonna say you're gonna have this this daycare, 
and you don't come to me for a direction. So we, we can have older people sabotaging or at least attempting to sabotage what you're doing. You're shaking yes, your head, yes, so go right in. Yes. I, I, I totally understand that, um, especially in the hair field. I had, old, you know, older family, friends that, oh, I've been doing this so long. You know, you need to do it this way. You need to do that. And I'm like, how, how are you telling me what I – you can give me suggestions. You can, you know – Tell me little things where it could be changed, but don't tell me what I need to do. God gave me this gift. God gave me everything that I needed. But, he put but it in didn't God tell me, me to tell you what to do? No, he didn't tell <laughs> me that, that. That's what, because but, I, I talked to the same guy. But don't we hear that? But so, so God that, told me to tell you what to do. So I'm that same God that told wisdom. you, though, is going to also come to me and tell me, too. Ms. Harper, He's always right going to confirm yeah. his word, not just that way. Right. So. Go right here. You're like you, you anxious. Yeah. Throw it in there. No, I'm okay. You know, I just hear from older people. I'm older. I have more wisdom. I have more experience. I've been there and done that. You know, but for me, there's a difference between purpose and passion. And there's a very thin line between purpose and passion. And sometimes your purpose and your passion could be the same thing. But how can right be wrong? Uh, Isn't the question? I had to tell myself that and I'm still dealing with that at 35 years old, having a business since 2017. How can right be wrong? Well, right is wrong when you don't go to God first. Right is wrong when God right. don't say yes, move. Right is wrong when God say stop, hold on, don't do it, right. move forward, mm -hmm. play Monopoly, go around the board, collect your $200, don't go to jail, this and that, you know. So for me, I was like, I like to empower, you know, um, I like to work with the youth. I like to work mm -hmm. with the girls. That was my, mm -hmm. um, I was a PBIS specialist in the charter school, and I just resigned to fully open up my child care center and a couple other reasons. But for me, I think with the younger generation, they're not taught integrity. Absolutely. That is integrity. They're not taught that your word is your bond. Your face is your business. Your face is your brand. What comes out of your mouth is your brand. So they're not taught these things. But what you see, what they hear is money. You need mm -hmm. money to survive. You need this. So our kids are not taught who is Jesus. Mm -hmm. What is God? What is the Bible? Proverbs is wisdom. If you just touch on Proverbs or read John 3.16, hey, but I was taught that. So it's, it's different. So we really can't expect, expect this younger generation to think how we think, no, know what we know, but we can empower them. It's, we and that's can what show comes. them. Yes. We can lead them. And then God said, you save one. Hey, you know what I'm saying? So when we introduce that to them, it's up to them to receive. But then with the older, older people, it's like, that your purpose or your passion? Did you really go to God? Did you really lay on your face? Did you fast? Oof. Did you pray? I'm still struggling. <laughs> I'm still like, okay, God, because this is what I know this is a need. I know mm -hmm. this community need this. It's right. I know it's right because this is a need, but it's like, wait, it could be wrong for me because I ain't say, God, is this what you have for me? Mm -hmm. Is this where my feet supposed to be? Or maybe it's for someone else, you know. But I have a spiritual mentor. Shout out, Linda Wright. Um, and I used to be her supervisor, and she's 68, 69 years old, I believe. And uh, I was a supervisor at a daycare center. I helped open a lot of people, open up their centers. And she said, you know what, Ms. Hopper, you're a planter. You're a planter. And I had to go back and look at my resume. I had to go back and look at all the other places I worked. And I'm like, my God. I done been all over the place. She's like, you're not meant to be nowhere long. You're meant to plant, enrich, empower, and move on. And so I didn't want to receive that years ago. I'm like, I done put all my money into this. I invested into this. This is mine. <laughs> and so now I'm just like, you know what, God? Whatever you have for me to do. Just make it clear. Make it plain. I mean, slap me in the face with it so I know. <laughs> Miss Hopper, this is what you're supposed to be doing. So I just think our kids has to be taught. 
They have to be taught what they need. And they need, the major thing they need is to see examples. Going back to what you said about your third grade teacher, that was an example. Yes. If, if they see good examples, they'll follow them. Right, right or wrong, children are, again, I've said this on the podcast before, children are not originators, they're imitators. They're going to follow whatever looks right to them. So we have to make sure what they see is right for them. And what they should see is Christ. Absolutely. If they're not seeing Christ, now, you know, we, what is the profit of man if you gain the whole world and lose its own soul? So if we follow and we chase after the money, great. You can have all the money in the world. It doesn't mean anything if you didn't leave the, the, correct, the correct example behind. And that's what they're looking for. They're looking for that. You use that word. You say a passion and purpose. And I talk about that in this book called Seven Signs of Success. But I add that third one to that. I said passion, purpose with power. Mm -hmm. God gives us the power to do these things. And what are we doing with that power? He put it in all of us to use. Are we using just as I was asking that question? We get those older people saying, but God told me to tell you. So what what generally is happening is I'm telling you, I'm saying, Shayla, God told me to tell you that you need to become this doctor. And you're saying the Lord told me to be a teacher. Nobody told me to tell you that you need to be a doctor. Well, so kind of going a little back on this conversation, I think that at the foundation, there has to be relationship. And Christ embodies that when he's um, close to his disciples. He doesn't just come in and say, follow me. I need you to do this. He builds relationships. So as mentors, as leaders in our fields, as teachers, right, at the at the core of our work, we have to build strong relationships. Um, and so to get over that hurdle of there being this bridge between younger people and older people, there has to be relationship and it has to be intentional um, and it has to be reciprocal. Um, And I say that as a mom, I have a eight year old boy um, and John can attest to this. Um, the, The word says out of the mouths of babes. And when I tell you my son at eight years old ministers to those who are thrice his age, mm-hmm. um, the way that the spirit of God dwells on the inside of him. So we can't just come with this mm-hmm. um, mentality that we possess the knowledge and that our children are empty vessels or that the young people, because God has given them anointing too. It just needs Amen. to be stewarded properly. Absolutely. So, right, we have to look at our stewardship as examples, and then we have to build those relationships so that those young people know that they're loved for and they care and they're cared for, and they can receive that direction. A lot of times, that's the missing piece. I can't receive it because you don't know me. You're judging me. And if mm. we look at Christ, he those who were the least, he got close to in both intentional relationships before he ever gave any demand. And so I think we have to be intentional and embody that type of relationship. Well, I love what you keep saying. and You kept emphasizing that relationship, relationship, relationship. And it's so important. Uh, Proverbs 1, 7 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So it's simply saying the word of God is telling us if Christ is not the center, we're going to mess up anyway Mm -hmm. because we have the tendency of wanting to do things our way, don't we? It's like, okay, my way is the right way no matter what happens. And once we have Christ as the center in the relationship, and that's what it comes down to, most people have a religion, but they lack the relationship. relationship. And we have to look at where am I in my relationship with Jesus Christ? Because as parents... Uh, I don't know, you're a single parent too, but because I heard all everybody have, have so far boys. saying single parents. Yes. As single parents, you have an awesome responsibility mm-hmm. with those children. Uh, Proverbs, I mean, Psalms 127 says that children are a heritage from the Lord. So the Lord simply said, I'm giving you a responsibility more than just you. Mm. I'm giving you these children alone to you. So you have a responsibility to these children to rear, bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. And give them so, back to me. Exactly. Bring them back. What did Hannah do? She said, you know, you blessed me with a child, and I'll bring the child back to you, Lord. And she said, okay, I brought the child back, Lord. And said, okay, good. That's yeah. what you've done. But in, in doing that, you have to be the first example for them to see. Absolutely. And, and again, there are absentee dads out there who need to be in their children's lives. But if they're not, God knows how to use you to get his, his word and his will accomplished. He will bring mentors mm-hmm. into that child's life to do the things that maybe somebody is not available to do. But the, the major thing is, do we have, I'm going back to what you just said, Shayla, do we have that personal relationship 
with Almighty God through his son, Jesus Christ. That's where the success is happening. It had nothing to do with it. We think we're doing it. Building. I'm building this business. The Lord, he said, no, you're not. Nope. Yeah. You're not building the business. Because if I, if I just wave my hand, Absolutely. you'll drop dead. The very breath that's coming out of you, I gave it to you. I'm giving you the ability to walk, to talk, and to think. So don't think it belongs to you because it doesn't. He mm -hmm. says it's only on loan to you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the difference. Like when we define the set, uh, success, I know most people would define it in terms of their profit and their bottom line statements. For me, um, this isn't my first venture. However, this is the first venture in which my, I activated my faith in a mm. different way. So previously, I had a couple of different ideas and I would pick them up and then fear and doubt would set in, right? Because I'm a single parent. Um, there's no business owners in my family and I'm looking at my capacity. And if I look at my capacity, I didn't, I shouldn't be an entrepreneur, right? Mm. And so, but I was looking at me, right? I was looking at what Shayla had. And so it was so easy for me to put those things down because I wasn't, I wasn't fixed on the fact that like, okay, God has given me this and he who starts a work in you will bring it to completion. So this was the first time where I had that pivot in my faith. And I was like, okay, you know, if God gives this to me, he's going to bring it to completion. So before I could, um, before I could even anticipate the what ifs, every doubt he began to extinguish. Well, what if the clients don't come? And before I was even ready for a client, he had a he had customers in a pipeline. Or what if the competition and he had to remind me of his promise for I know the plans I have for you, for you to succeed and to prosper. And so every time I tried to come with a doubt in my own, thinking in my own strength, he extinguished them. Uh, and that's why I say for me, my business is about purpose because I know that God is going to do whatever he needs to do to keep me in his will. Now, if I decide to step out of that and get in my own perm permissive will, that's a different story. But to stay in his will with the spiritual gifts he's given me, um, I think that that's really how Lanscursions came about. Um, and that, that's that's what drives me, like knowing that God has his hands on this. I'm not doing this in my own power because I don't have the power to do it. Like Statistically, I shouldn't even be an entrepreneur. But God called me and chose me. And so... Um, I, a part of my story is making sure I proclaim that and I minister to others because you don't have to have the investors and you don't have to have the family who have, who have business owners or the mentors, oh, as long as you got I him, got anything is possible. And I know that sounds cliche and most business people will come from a practical standpoint of investing and doing a SWOT analysis. I did none of that. And God has made and opened a door every step of the way. And I've just started this business in May. Only, but only thing, know. only thing that's I know both want to jump yeah. in. Now, every only thing sounds cliche. It only sounds cliche to those who don't know the power of God. Right. It's, that's the only. One. But go right ahead. But what you saying? Your relationship, and you saying you don't have the power. No, you have it. He gave it to you. So don't. From this day on, don't ever say that you don't have the power. Anything is possible with God, and you have that relationship with Him, which means you have the power. Mm. Right, I don't have it alone. You absolutely right. I have it with him. That's and, and you know what you were doing every every step along the way you just mentioned. You relied on the word of God. Yes. You kept saying you showed the invoke power the word of God. Time. The word of yeah. God. Why? That's because amazing. we we have to understand that our power comes from God. Absolutely. He, what he, he he gave us that power. He said, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You should be witnesses unto me. So what God did is simply said, and this little earthen vessel, he said, I'm going to put all of my majesty. Mm -hmm. And I tell people, we miss the mark sometimes when we think about the Lord. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all live in you. Mm -hmm. So when we say, well, I, I can't do it, the Lord said, what do you mean you can't do it? You're walking in your flesh at that moment. Mm -hmm. If we're in the exactly. flesh, we can't please God. But in the spirit, in all the spirit. things are possible. Yeah. Why? Because the Father, who is the creator of everything, the Son who died for yes. us, and Holy Spirit who came and sealed us, he said, Lord. all of us are in you. Yep. So for me to go, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I can do it, Lord. He said, no, no, you, you can, can do, do it. it. I can do what? All, All things, things through, through Christ. Right. So what you guys That's are modeling here and modeling <laughs> today to those viewers and the listeners who are watching and hearing this, you're letting them know the power of God and how it emanates in you, whether you're male or female. Correct. So, no, God simply is telling you as ladies, say, you don't need no God to do this. 
I he got you. I got you. He done showed it all these years. <laughs> well, I want to say something. Go right ahead. What motivated me to uh, reestablish Breast Blessed to Teacher Richmond Center in Cleveland was my boys. I have a six year old, an eight year old, and a 14 year old. And so for me, I said, I want to leave something for my children, right? I want to make sure that they're not a burden on anyone if God called me home before them. Um, and so for me, income tax, stimulus, paychecks, so on and so forth, I took all that money and I said, I'm starting a business. That's right. I'm leaving this to my boys. I'm buying a home. I'm leaving this to my boys. You know, and it took me a long time to write a will. Uh, kudos to my fiance. He was the laborer. He put all the time and energy into building and bringing my vision to life. Mm -hmm. Him and his uncle. I mean, my crew were, no offense, were all over the age of 56 that turned the beauty salon and convenience store into a phenomenal um, enrichment center. Um, but for me, my thing was I'm taking this money and I'm making it something that can be for my kids long term whether I'm here or not and so for me if God called me home right now my boys have a roof and they have a business That's they great. can do whatever they want to do they can split it third sell it whatever the case they want to be but my children will not be a burden because some kids that come into other families for whatever reason and they don't have what they need it, it can become hard for other families other parents so I've always thought no one is obligated to do anything for me. Mm -hmm. My mom is not obligated to be a grandmother. God rest my father. So my sisters, whomever. So anybody do anything for me and my children, I thank them somehow, some way. And so for me, that was really a big part of why I used my finances and opened up a daycare center and bought a home. And I just want to say there are some absentee mothers um, my dad, he passed away in 2016. He was a single dad. And it was me and five of us under, it was five of us under him. And at the age of 14, he took us all in. And that was my first year in high school. So I was the oldest of five of the children. And so I grew up really quick. I'm doing hair. I'm trying to go to school. I'm trying to have my own little life. And this and that. And so when I graduated from high school, my father moved from Cleveland, moved out to Elyria, and took the remainder of my siblings. My youngest brother under me, he drowned. He passed away at 16. So I want to say kudos to the fathers Amen. that are fathers. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. Because we have some moms. I love my mother to death. We, had a, we have a great relationship, but for whatever reason, I was with my dad, and maybe God see fit because my father taught me Everything I need to know of how to move in the streets, how to have relationships, business, how to dress, how to look. And I remember one day getting dressed. I had on all this jewelry. It was colorful. And he was like, what do you have on? Why do you have on all that stuff? And I said, because I like it. He said, does it make you, Joanna? I said, no. He said, okay. And that's how I want you to look at me. It's an accessory, not a necessity. Mm. All this stuff you have All right, on guys. <laughs> Listen, at 14 years old, his name was John Hopper. At 14 years old, he said, all this jewelry you have on is an accessory, mm -hmm. not a necessity. And that's how I want you to look at me. And now my father knew, my father drove Cadillacs. He had custom meat hats and all of this stuff. But he was a real man. He was an alpha man. My father had 11 children and three Three of his boys passed away. And uh, I was there, you know, the day he passed away. And I said, what am I supposed to do? It's like, you my male best friend. And he was like, you, you busy? Like, you like a neon crayon in the, in the Crayola box. You ain't the regular color. You the neon, you know. And I was like, I'm getting it from you. You driving Cadillacs and customized minks and hats and all this stuff. He said, Always remember to be still. Stop bouncing all over the place. Be still, and you can hear my voice. And I was like, I can hear your voice, but I can hear the Father voice. I can hear God's voice as well. And I promise you, when I'm confused or I'm going through some things, I get still. still. And I can hear my Father say, 
A, B, C. And I guarantee you, I know it's God mm-hmm. for sure. But when I move that way, it has never, ever failed me. And God speaks so, in a voice that we are familiar with. Yes. So you, you understood that voice to be God's, but it, it was in your fl- inflections of your father. Absolutely. Why? Inflections of your father, but inflection of your heavenly father. Absolutely. Yeah. And, I, and I love what you just said, because we don't often hear a shout out to de- the guys out there, because there's some guys who are going through some hardships, and they, you know, the deadbeat moms. We don't hear women talking about deadbeat moms so much. So, so for right. you to say that, that's kind of yeah. And my fiance, he's a phenomenal stepdad. I mean, his kids are grown, so he started all over with my three, and he fills in the gaps, the missing pieces, and so on God and so forth. God always do it for you. Uh, God always gonna absolutely. For you. Listen, I wasn't even looking. Okay, and that's why you and that's why they <laughs> when you when not met, looking. When we met in the church, and I wasn't looking. I was like, I'm going to find me a female pastor, and I'm gonna get her teaching. I'm gonna try something different. And we lived on the same street for two years, four houses down, never seen each other, but attended the same church, Bible study, and everything. How? We see each other, and we I can throw a rock because everything is in God's time, and not it was yours. in God's timing. See, but there, there again, is important for us to know when we really stop trying to do it on our own. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and I've said this so many times before. Many of us, we tend to drive, get in the driver's seat with God or in the front seat with God. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. how many times do we get it? No, we, <laughs> we get in that passenger seat with God because we figure if I'm in the front seat, Lord, you know, when the, the driver's driving, what do we have a tendency to do? You driving too fast. Uh-huh, you didn't put on the brake. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see that? <laughs> All that comes out of our mouth, and God simply says, "You know what? I don't need you in the front seat. Go ahead, get in the Sit back. back." How many times willingly do we want to get in the That's back seat? That's hard as a strong single independent mom to it's very hard. take the cape off. We all want the cape off, right? We all want to take that cape off and don't want to be super mom. But it's really, really hard. But it's not impossible. It's not impossible. It's impossible. It's not impossible. With God's help, all things are possible. And I know you didn't start a business without God. You, sometimes we think we're doing certain things on our own. And Lord, always remind you, how many times have we taken you back down the path of your business to let you know, this was me. Yes. <laughs> this was me. This was me. And I know you thought this was you, me? but no. That was me. How many yeah. times did he do that? Hmm. And I mean, a little every Friday. Well, it's only been a couple <laughs> months for me. It's only been a couple months for me. And before I started, he, someone in my church had established a party bus rental company where they were brokering the bookings. So by the time I started, I, like I said, I had a pipeline. That was him. So he established the business before I even had a vision for it and everything else. So I don't really lose sight of it. Maybe my business is um, very fresh, but I think it matters how you start. Right. Um, and so I started on raw faith. I didn't start on a whole lot of money. I didn't start on investment. I didn't start on anything but faith. And so that keeps me honest with like, you know, where I'm at. And, and who's with me and and the anointing that I have and that God sees me fit to give this to me, right? right. And so the business for me is more of affirmation that God is going to always provide. He's going to be my source and my resource. And that's what he's been, I mean, all my life, but specifically as we're talking about business from the very beginning. Um, and I get to see that when I compare when Shayla was trying to do Shayla's own thing and it wasn't sustainable. Mm-hmm. But then when she joined forces with the Lord, it was like, okay, I'm going to just give this to you. You know, it's been effortless. That's I mean, right. really effortless. So, <laughs> what, what did he tell us again? Uh, we've been using scripture here. So let's continue to do that. He says, seek ye first mm-hmm. the all kingdom of God. Added into you. And what did he say? All things will be added Not unto you. It, it, you don't have to go. You see, most of the time we go chasing the money and the money should be chasing us. God already, right. the earth is the Lord's, the fullness there of the world and all that dwells therein. Everything belongs to him anyway. Mm-hmm. So if, we just simply do what he's called us to do. And that is, number one, as you were saying earlier, is that be still moment. Yes. Yeah. So, sometimes God simply say, you run in your mouth and you don't need to. He said, be still mm-hmm. and know that I am God. Absolutely. And in those still, quiet moments, he starts directing. And you go, okay, okay, I see this. And if that fear, as you were talking about before, that doubt and that fear and that hesitation comes in, we're like, oh, I'm not sure he'll do it. I'm not sure he'll do it. And then we go seeking false counsel. Mm-hmm. 
We go looking for people. Uh, uh, Leah, you luckily want to say something there. Go right here. I know how to. I, I know that one firsthand. You know, you get inside of yourself. You get inside of your head. You you kind of like push God to the back, even though that's where you know all your answers come from. But because life comes in, so much stuff start happening. You say, okay, well, let me talk to somebody that's been through this. What they went through ain't what you going through. Mm-hmm. But we not thinking that way. We thinking, okay, so you had just say me, you had a you got a salon and it's thriving and this, this and that. Let me talk to you, but your issue ain't mine. You actually have never really been through what I'm going through. So how can you how can I get counsel from you? That's when God do like this. Hey, <laughs> why you keep pushing me away? I'm trying to help you. You're you're being hurt going this way, not knowing that you talking to somebody else, thinking that that person can understand you, not knowing that that's hurting you. Because who knows what that person's motive is? They hearing you messed up. Oh, okay, well, let me, girl, did you hear this? And this is going on? And they might give you the wrong information. When you could have just said, hey, hey, Lord. I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm, that's my relationship with God. My my relationship with God is more of a real, you know, <sighs> father daughter type of relationship. I, that's how I talk to him. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I messed up. Can you please help me? And, and God, that is- the, the, the the he's so awesome. I got you. It's never know what well, you should have did this so and you should have did that. Mm-hmm. It's, I got you. Just be still. Instead so of beating you up over, he said, I, you know, I forgive you. It's okay. I, I, I still That's love you. That's how awesome he is. Now, this is our patience and anxiety. Let me ask you guys, all three of you, this too, then. Anxiety. since uh, yeah. you, 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 We're moving down that path a little bit. So let me ask you this. <laughs> how many, well, no, I should say how many. How often, you don't have to give me any numbers, but how often have you, relied on your emotions rather than relying on God. Oh, I mean, I'm an emotional person, so that's like almost always. Often. <laughs> um but he always, you know, God God it has a way of um loving us even in correction. And so when I find myself in myself, he definitely gives me a reality check very quickly. Um and so I and I I liken that to that's how much he loves me. I'm not going to let you sit in anxiety and discomfort for too long. Um most of the time when he allows it is so that we will realize that we can't do it in our own self and we have to seek him. And so sometimes when we're going through those storms and those struggles, it's just to feel Sometimes we get puffed up and boastful and we think that we've done something right. And it's to humble us to say, you know, mm-hmm. you can't do this without me. I, I, I know that you may be in the blogs and you may have been in this article and today you got an interview. Right. But you can't. None of this would be possible without me. So sometimes God will step in and give you a reality check. And he's a fan of the process. So even when it comes to seeking counsel, which the, the word talks about seeking wise counsel, but um, he. God is just like, there is no, he, he's a jealous God, right? So he doesn't want us to exalt anyone or anything before him. So even before we go to someone else, we need to go to him to say, to humble ourselves and say, Father, can you put those people that you have to cross my path in my life? Because sometimes we could get ourselves into situations, whereas we may be looking at a destination like your example seeking counsel from somebody who's been there because you think they're successful. Well, God is a fan of the process. Maybe what he has you going through is because he wants to do something different. So you're so focused on the destination, but he's focused on the process because he's refining you and you're still on the wheel. He's still molding you and shaping you for the things you haven't even seen yet. And so I've, I've learned that in various ways to just, like you say, be still and allow God to mold and shape me. And so I have to always, um, Manage my relationships with others and make sure that my relationship with God is my first priority and then others. And, and the other thing you were just mentioning, and it's so true, their success is not your success. That's right. And we try to make, and I talk about again in the seven signs of success, I said, I talk about what success is and what success isn't. And I, uh, really your business, you're not in competition. You, God didn't say to compete with anybody. 
because he's a jealous God, number one. It was for you, it was for you. Exactly. He, yeah. he didn't ask us to compete. I always tell him, he didn't ask me to compete, but he asked me to complete. Mm-hmm. In other words, complete the assignment that I've given you. Mm. He said, you busy running in this race. If you're going to run the race and you're busy with your head turned, you don't see what's ahead of you because you're busy looking behind yeah. you. God already knows. He's given us the script before the foundation of the world. The world, Everything you say in your husband, your, your fiance, few doors away you didn't even know he was down yeah. there and the lord said not only is he down there but he's going to do some things you never knew he could That's do right. mm-hmm. when we stop trying to do it and I, I, again i want both of you to yet answer this on the emotion aspect mm-hmm. because we do get led by that emotion emotions are good to have but our emotions should never have us so that's why I wanted you guys to answer about emotions. Have you been tied up in those emotions at times? And Shayla's right with what she said, but I want to hear from you guys too. Okay, well, my thing would be in 2019, 2020, you know, like before 19, it was all led on emotions and, you know, myself. But in 19 and then in 20, God made it to where I had no other choice but to rely on him. He humbled me when it came to my, I have an 18 year old, about to be 19 year old daughter. And I have a 12 year old daughter. My daughter, my oldest daughter tried to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. She was so depressed and so hurt and so broken that she felt like she needed to take her life. And at that point, I ain't had no other choice but to get on my knees, fall on my face, fast, pray that I had no other choice. So it was Emotions were gone. Mm-hmm. It was, you You rely on me in this situation, I will take care of everything else. And pandemic happened, had no other choice but to be at home. Mm-hmm. Salons was closed. Daughter went through hospitals, everything. Now it's the pandemic. It's just us. Mm-hmm. It's just us and God. He made it to where I was able to pray, teach, everything I needed to do for my children in that time. And when I say, when I relied on truly him, bills were paid, uh, kids were taken care of. My daughter did a whole 360. She, at the age of 17, was still in the ninth grade. She ended up graduating on time. Amen. She just graduated Amen. this year, enrolled into college for Amen. somebody who didn't even want to live. Yeah. So I had to rely truly on him. Mm-hmm. No emotions, no nothing. And when you do that, he will take care of everything else. See, so that brought that humbled yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Do both of you say this word again? Both of you use it? That humble. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and that's a key to... Anything we want to do, we have to humble ourselves before the Lord. If we don't, pretty much a waste of time. Really. I want to say for me, emotions come when the yet, in the yet period. When that yet period come, you have to have patience because you don't know when God mm-hmm. will start moving. So in the yet, what do you do? Now you start thinking about things. Okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. Okay, and then it's not working Mm -hmm. because you're still in that process. You have to be patient. And so for me, it's like I'm trying everything. And and then reality said again, girl, you are still in the yet period. What are you doing? You have to wait on God. You know, and so I will get affirmation from my mentor, my fiance, different, a few people that's in my circle. Um, but for me, my thing is you treat people how you want to be treated. You talk to people how you want to be talked to. I teach my boys that. I tell my boys when they have issues in the classroom and they don't like what their teachers are doing and so on and so forth, you put the word of God on them. This is how we move in this year. God said, treat people how you want to be treated. Talk to people how you want to be talked to. So my middle son, his name is Jacob, Jacob Daniel, he said, well, what if the teacher say be quiet or this and that? God said he'll deal with that because you didn't came into the knowledge. Like you say, out of the mouth of the babe. Mm-hmm. And that's how we move, you know. And so they're like, mommy, it's different because normally it's called mommy. So the school know who I am and different things like that. But it's like, no, we're in this process. We're in this period. I have to wait. 
I can't go up to that school and be running away. I'm an educator. I know what it is. So is this a, is this what the rules say? I'm always going, what the rules say? What is the law for this? No, nope. we going with God. I can't move over here. You guys are old enough. I'm training you guys up. And so for me, it's just occupying my time in the yet and waiting on God and not trying to do it on my own. So, so you keep saying that scary things. All of you saying that scary thing. You know, waiting on the Lord. You know, come on. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, taking, it's taking a long time waiting on the Lord. I mean, I've been waiting for years, Lord. And, and when is this going to change? When is it going to change? And he said, it's going to change when I'm ready when for I it. Say, change. Right. When I say you know so in the meantime, what do you do? That's that. Yeah. yeah. You got to say. You know what? Say what is it? Okay, Lord. Faith, faith is the substance of things right. hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I always tell people my translation of that is God will do whatever God chooses to do when he chooses to do it. Mm-hmm. We only have five minutes left. I'm going to give you guys a moment to uh, share what you have uh, and what you want people to know about you. I mean, they know about your faith yeah. right now. So <laughs> right. And you can look at the camera and tell them what you have. Each one of you give a, a, a minute or so, and then it'll be time for us to conclude. Uh, well, I just want to thank everyone for tuning in. Um, again, I'm the owner of Land Scursions. You can follow us on Instagram at Land Scursions underscore, and that's L-A-N-D, such as Cleveland, Scursions, S-C-U-R-S-I-O-N-S. You can also... Um, Email us at landscursions at gmail.com. But overall, I just want you to take away from this that it is so important to get to know God if you don't know him already. Have him as your source and your foundation. As you, as you see amongst us ladies, it's not possible without him. So we hope that we have encouraged you, um, if nothing else, if, if not to move, to start a business, to get to know the man who can make it possible. Um, and I'll pass it on to my colleague. Okay, so clearly you was the co-host. <laughs> 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 okay, once again, Aaliyah Langford, um, Master Stylist, Silky Strands in Twinsburg. Um, you can reach me at Silky Strands under, uh, underscore two. And Aaliyah Truly Blessed Langford on Facebook. Um, and once again, definitely found relationship, not religion, mm-hmm. relationship Amen. with the Savior. Okay, my name is Miss Hopper, Joanna Hopper. Blessed with Teacher Enrichment Center is located at 8410 Cedar Avenue. Uh, my hours are Monday, hours and days are Monday through Friday from 6.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday from 7.30 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Um, what I want to share with a lot of parents, uh, male or female, is Get into your child's world. This Mm -hmm. is their world. Understand their world. Understand what they're going through. And don't be afraid to ask for help when you cannot. Uh, Pray and ask God to move things around so that you can be a part of your child's life because their education lies in the parent's hand first, then the school, then the enrichment center, and back at home. Because you threw that enrichment center in there. <laughs> well, we want to we want to thank all of our guests for being here today. Powerful uh, podcast today. Powerful program. Amazing. And again, once again, I want to apologize for the dark glasses. I'm not trying to be Hollywoodish or anything. I just have an eye issue that I don't want to show my eye off to the audience because everybody be shutting off real quick. <laughs> So once again, thank you for being with thank us, unlocking the power of you. Yes, uh, it's been a pleasure to have you. Look forward to next week's podcast, and we're going to be continuing this on. We want to have women again doing this. Yeah, women in the house. Thank you. Special thank you. So before you run out of here, because I know you say you have to leave, we need to take a picture because we usually.